In other words, the world is not to blame. The earth is not to blame. The time that we're in is not to blame. The technology that we've generated is not to blame. Even the people are not to blame. Spiritual teachers are to blame. <laughs> For you see, it is their responsibility to educate. I'm not actually kidding that much. But there, of course, nobody is to blame. But we need an educational system that works. And I'm also talking about schools, but I'm not just talking about schools. I'm just talking about everyone. Planetary civilization needs to look like education, period. Meaning that it is a planet where beings come together to learn, to co-create, to enjoy, to be taught, to have teachers, whether from this dimension or from the next, depending on how open that civilization is. It can come in all kinds of forms and in all kinds of visitations. But imagine a planet where the standard is to come together to learn. And that's what you'd see. The buildings all around would be like places to come together to learn, to co-create, to be in joy, to expand, to empower oneself, to quote-unquote meditate and contemplate and enjoy life. We need to educate ourselves. We need to educate each other. There needs to be an effect effective, efficient system that teaches step-by-step step, every single person how to clean up their vibrational mess. And Trinfinity Academy is a beginning idea of this that we've manifested. But, of course, we're looking to expand that greatly in different ways. So education is what's missing. Vibrational education. Enlightenment is what's missing. Nothing else is to blame, because as soon as this information is made available, and as soon as there's a certain threshold, a certain amount of people that start to live this way, it becomes so much easier for everyone else that might not be at the same level of IQ or intelligence, able to grok these concepts, but they can go in the flow of the threshold that has been passed by the collective. Does that make sense? So it is up to all of you that have the privilege of sitting here, and it is up to me to take that responsibility, if you feel that calling, if you feel that honor, to disseminate your empowerment. How do you do that? Not by preaching, not by knocking on people's doors on Sunday morning, although that's fun too. It is by living as fully as you can, okay? You need to be an example. Your radiance, the way that you're living, needs to be a natural question mark that's above your head for everyone else. Like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> wherever you go, whenever you give someone a smile, whenever you shake their hand, whenever you say something, whenever you introduce yourself, however you present yourself, in whatever way, people should be turning their heads, even if they don't know why. And not because you look good or you do this or you, you dress yourself in a certain way, but because of the way that you're being, because of what you're emitting, because of what you're sending out, you see. And you all know these experiences when you feel really, really genuinely good, genuinely good, grounded in goodness, grounded in happiness, solid, fucking solid. Whoever you meet, new or old, sees a question mark above your head and goes, who the fuck is this dude or who the fuck is this gal? Now, when you do that, it's the subtlest way to teach, but it's the most efficient way to teach. It's the most powerful way to teach because it will spill out into all the work that you're doing, into all the relationships that you're having. So cliche as it sounds, and limited perhaps as it sounds from a linear point of view, but to change the world, you need to take responsibility for your own empowerment. Is that enough? That is absolutely enough. Because what do you do when you're happy? What do you do when you're overflowing? What do you do when you're ecstatic? You give. You give. You give, you create, you don't react, you don't take, you don't need, you give, you teach, you educate, you enlighten, you radiate, you rub off on everyone that you meet and people that don't even know you that never met you physically. You rub off on people vibrationally. If they're even slightly within the realm of being able to perceive and it being irrelevant for their soul journey here on earth as a being to take from that vibration, they will whether or not they realize that they are. And whatever you have been growing up with, whatever the challenges that you have as part of your makeup, those are your gifts to the world. Whatever trauma, whatever psychological difficulty you carry with you today, whatever obstacles, whatever struggle you're going through today, that is the gift you took on for the sake of planetary enlightenment. All of you, no exception. There are no selfish people on this planet at this time, whether they realize it or not. Each and every one that has been incarnating within the say, past, say, 40, 50 years has, as part of themselves, inevitably, and before that, many as well, but 100% at this point. What? Oh, you just, just made it. You're like, right. 
<laughs> uh, no, well, every single person here, regardless of age. <laughs> but generally speaking, out there, people that are just not really knowing what they're doing, 100% of them that are under the age of approximately 40 or 50 years old are here not just for their own purpose, but they're also here to serve the collective in this enlightenment age, whether they know it or not, whether they want it or not. Well, they want it, ultimately, but whether they realize they want it or not. So what I'm saying is that whatever psychological issues you might seemingly be dealing with, just know that, that you're not the only person dealing with that. And as you're dealing with that in the most conscious way, you're literally, you're literally, you're literally enlightening that darkness in the net of our collective and that same area of consciousness which so many others around the world are hooked into, the same blueprint, the same area, you are being of service to, in many of your cases, literally millions of people by making a shift in the solitude of your bedroom. So realize that you are spiritual teachers and you are responsible. You are responsible for the stuff that you agreed to experience. You are responsible for whatever lingers in you today that no longer fits in with this new reality that needs to be looked at and transformed. This is what you want. This is why you're here and this is your service. Nobody may ever know about it in many of your cases, but you can know about it. And everyone else hooked into the same area of consciousness will somehow know about it. And once everybody's dead, you will rejoice on spirit level and see all the work that you've done and all the beings that you benefited. And you will come together in this great afterlife party. And suddenly there's a million people waiting to thank you for your service. So you may never know that you're a spiritual teacher and well known at that, but you are. So don't feel like it's just you in your head because it's never just you in your head. There's nothing that you can do today that is not exposed to the collective, vibrationally exposed. We've alre already reached a vibrational environment within which transparency is king. So we might still hold up on our very personal consciousness level, we might still hold up the barriers of, I don't know what you're thinking right now. We might still pretend that's the case. But environmentally, vibrationally speaking, that's no longer the case. Everything is lifted. The veil has been lifted. This means that everything you do is available to everyone else for all of eternity. Don't be ashamed. Don't try to contain yourself. Like I said, it's never been just you and your head. It's always been you and your service to planet Earth. So feel empowered in that way. Don't feel stuck because you're not stuck. You're being of service. You're helping. You're working on the last few fragments that represent an old collective consciousness that cannot fully move into the new world as it stands. And so we're all cleaning up. It's like one dirty vibrational room and we're all after a party, a big party of millennia of warfare and vibrational mess. But now everyone, at least those that are conscious to be conscious of their struggle and to be able to navigate it at least to some extent, we are the cleaning crew. And that's quite all right because we will inherit this earth no matter if we fail or succeed in cleaning up everyone else's mess. But we'll try. We'll try our best. We'll go as far as we can. We'll get as many with us as we can. You've already made it, so you're just being of service. You're just sticking your hands out into the old earth. Come, let me remove this from your path. Let me make it easy on you. You still have to walk this way. But let me make it easy on you. Let me make it conscious to you. Let me enlighten you so that you know not to run in that direction, but to actually walk towards the light. Does this make sense? Does this resonate as potentially true in your own life? So be proud of yourself. That's a very underestimated quality in spirituality. I feel proud of myself so many times. <laughs> Even more opposition? You got this. And then making it through. And then I'm so proud of myself yet again and yet again. Be proud of yourself. It's a good quality. Don't be afraid that it will trigger your ego. It's good to trigger your ego. The quicker it will disappear. The quicker it will relax itself. If you suppress it all the time, it will always be there lurking, controlling your thoughts from the shadows of your being. Expose it. Be proud. 
Feel better than everybody else every once in a while. See how that feels. Bring consciousness into that experience. What does it feel like to be superior to everyone else? What does it feel like to feel inferior to everyone else? Same question, really. Feel into these things that make up this comparative mechanism that we call the ego effect. Bring light to it. Bring freedom to it. Let it express itself. If you let it express itself in a safe environment where you just hold the space for it and you feel the feelings without killing someone that's in your way or stealing something from someone because they have it and you think you don't, but just letting it arise in the space. Letting the full ego effect come about. What do you really want? Do you want to be on stage? Do you want to talk to a million people? Do you want to um, drive the fastest car in the world? Do you want to have the most money out of everyone? Let these thoughts come up and own them, feel them, so that they can clarify themselves, so that they can become pure, they can become allies instead of distractions and negative shadow sides of you. Bring it all out into the light so that you can use all of that desire, all of that passion for power to the advantage of everyone, for everyone's best interest.